Hey, right, to be down for the get down, man, please. Right up. You gon' you gonna die. Do it Thursday, Fridays. Stand your ass up to home is Kids who were unfazed on Beyond Scare Straight. Beyond Scare Straight is a television series that was aired on A&E between like 2011, 2015. It was probably one of the most popular television series. But let's go ahead and get into it right now and see what's going on, man. Anthony doesn't take anything seriously, which is why he worries his mom, who finds his attitude rubbing off on his young sister. I'm Anthony. Oh, I remember Anthony. And I've been arrested for gun charges. I remember Anthony. This dude was not taking nothing. I he wasn't, he wasn't going for Nathan. Nothing ticks off officers more than the smug grin on Anthony's face. And if he were allowed, this officer would probably smack it off his face. Think it's a joke? Think it's funny? Yeah. Why? With oh me and everybody else. Oh my God, God ain't gonna help you here. Can someone give Willie his well-deserved medal because he calls out his offense like it's a breakthrough in string theory? What's your problem? Why are you here today? You're proud of being disrespectful. Yeah, I don't give a crap. Like it, Despite their tactics, Willie remains unmoved by the officers. Would meeting with the inmates be any different? That boy Willie had the death stir the whole time. Anybody came to him, he was, I'm talking about like, fearless, bro. Puts a roof over your head, buys that clothes you got on, and you're gonna hit her? Put your hands down before I take you down. Anthony is happy to have camaraderie in his rebellion and acts up even more. If you gotta use the bathroom, it's right there. If you need a drink of water, it's right there. <laughs> it's funny, that's, that's what you want for your sister? Anthony's continued defiance gets to the officer, and he snaps. Time. I know you are. You, you are time. You won't even stand up and try to help your sister. Don't rely on a coward to protect you. If the officers were expecting Willie and Anthony to behave when they meet the inmates, they're in for a world of disappointment. Bruh, Noggin is just like... His neck compared to his head, paws, ratio is just, it's just crazy. What do you for? Arm burglary. Oh, burglary. I asked you a question. You want to go in there with him? Oh, really? I'll be back. Cortesia has more vices than some adults would ever have in their lifetime. Oh, I remember her. My name is Cortesia. I'm 15. I get in trouble for fighting, smoking weed. That's why I how I bust this girl's head open. Then they called the police. Lakeisha has experienced the horrors of incarceration and doesn't want it for her child, whose actions point to prison as her destination. I went to prison for um, possession of CDS. Reason why I'm worried about Cortesia's getting high. Bring him in. Cortesia gives the officers hell at intake, which means her tour will be as dramatic as possible. At the inmate interview, the inmates are immediately drawn to Cortesia, and they probe to see what she's made of. What's funny? What's so f funny? Take them shoes oh, off. Uh, take them out, so you ain't gonna so take you off your shoes? Take out. Like, take, 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 take out. Take out. Take out. She's made of sterner stuff than other teenagers, as she doesn't dissolve into tears when cornered, but gives as much as she gets. Shorty said bloods all day soon. That's crazy. But the reaction isn't positive either. So you gangin' bloods, huh? What the Blood's doing for you. Don't like me all in your face. Do something. You ain't the only one who mama been in and out the in the tent. I know, God. If I'm not mistaken, she, I think she swung on somebody. When surrounded, most of the teenagers act with defiant rage, but very few act with lethal calm. The tough right here. You the tough Who the gangster, huh? What's up, who pussy tough? boy? I ain't got no You a number in it. You a gangster. Unsurprisingly, after the initial chaos, the inmates single Kenneth out as the teen with the heart of stone. That's the kind they enjoy breaking. But would they be able to break him? What you in here for? Gang banging. Fight. Gang banging? Your little punk ass. Blackstone. Punk ass dude. Kenneth responds to all the questions thrown at him coolly, making the inmates more determined to get a reaction out of him. Man, he don't even know no lit, man. He ain't in no gang, man. Guards only come through here 30 minutes. And go a whole nother 30 minutes with your bitch. You ever been in trouble before, little boy? Yeah. For what? Speak up. I can't hear you. Man, I don't sleep on them white dudes, man. I'm telling y'all. Them, them must be thinking, oh, just because I'm black, I ain't got to, bro. Them white dudes be getting down, too. Them Asians be getting down. Them Hispanics definitely be getting down, bro. Like, people, it ain't, it ain't really no race when I say it comes to, 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 this, to the gangbang and stuff. George's expression mirrors the shock most people in the room feel as not even the big bad wolf gets through to Kenneth. I'm the big dog, so when they come in here with that bull I'm gonna set their ass straight. Cause you one of them tough I sell that boy for Zuzu's. That's what you gonna be. He shows he can be malleable in the right circumstance. <laughs> Do it Thursday, Fridays. Stand your ass up to home is shit. 
Call me shit. Right said. now. Give it to That's him. That's what I, I, I wish you don't do. Oh, Unbelievable. <laughs> bro, I'm sorry, bro. We would have just had it, bro. We would have just had it there fighting there. I'm sorry, bro. You're not finna tell me to call me your taco meat, bro, on your chest? Bro, like, that's 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 claim. You're claimed. You might as well put Kool-Aid on your lips now. Oh, you sorry, folks. Grab comb, man. Watch out, man. Grab the comb, man. I know he ain't do it. You better grab it. I know he ain't do it. Not only is Kenneth not scared, he doesn't allow himself even to be moved by an emotion as mundane as anger. With that face, he would be great at poker. Just imagine, bro. Like, like the the intensity that's going on here. I don't even know how to feel if I was buddy though. Like, oh my God. Like, like what, is, what is it that I'm supposed to do in a situation like this? I wouldn't ever call no taco me though. Is the pack's leader, and he shows the officers the position isn't just because of his age. This is where I start right here. When a teen proves adamant, torturing the sibling is a sure way to get them to behave. What would Isaiah do to save his younger brother? Eat that sandwich. Eat it. Swallow that damn sandwich, man, all right? <laughs> Eat it. Grab the sandwich. Oh, Eat it. Apparently nothing except sit on his butt and dish out orders. It works, though, as Jeremiah gets over his moment of repentance. Don't eat that, man. This is just no, man. See? Teach him bad That's stuff. why you teach him bad why you know, Why? Why? Too good for a sandwich? Faith is the next pawn in the officer's arsenal, and while she proves cooperative, she isn't helpful in securing Isaiah's cooperation. Bro, they got all one guard against the grain, bro. Like, why did they do that to Buddy Damn Head? Him and his brother that he just told not to eat the sandwich. Both of their heads side by side. All it'll succeed in doing is to make him angry, not remorseful. Oh, no, man. Fix your hands. Off my table. Oh, I got you ain't so But he said, I got problems with people touching me. He's supposed to take care of you. He's going to give you the same look. If you can't help her, at least don't add to her problem. Jeremiah's defiance only adds germs to the list of things Faith has to endure on this tour. Maybe they should separate the siblings so Isaiah doesn't keep undoing their progress with the other siblings. Stop. Stop. Listen, if something happens to her, what are you going to do? Stop acting like him over there. You better than that. Spoken like a true Pharisee. Even though Tai Chell and Tai Lexus are sisters, they are as different as day and night, which is revealed minutes into the. Oh, I remember them. It's Tai 13. I still I drink and I fight with my mom. And I fight with my brothers and sisters. Having one delinquent is a lot for a parent, and dealing with two is more than Michelle can handle. So she signs up the siblings for the jail tour. Me and my sister, we fight a lot. Something can be really going on serious, and Tyler will laugh in your face. Big sisters, if they learn something from it, they can help each other. Being the eldest doesn't always equate to being the toughest, and Ty Chell's tough exterior cracks in prison. Your sister right now, and you need to tell your sister that you're going to lead by example. Tyler says, I love you. Do you love your sister? Yes, I love my sister. Unfortunately, the tour isn't having the same effect on Ty Lexus, who seems even more hardened than before she came in. Do you love your sister? I love you. Do you mean it? No, sir. That's piss poor. You know that, right? Ty Lexus's disposition is so cold that even Taylor, another team in the program, comments on it. Comes back. Did I want to stop communicating with her more? She just stood in her sister's face and said she loved her. You know how much that hurt her? Words do not go away. True to her promise in jail, Ty Chell becomes a better person after the program, but the same can't be said for her younger sister. Dang. I got a better attitude. But me and Tyler's relationship is just the same. Family is a great motivator to do better, and if she cannot feel anything for her sibling, how would Ty Lexus relate with others or be motivated to change? I do feel like that it, it matters at home. I feel like that it starts at home. It's only so much that program can do. It, it could kind of, it, let's say it can start the spark, but to, to get that fire going, it's going to be way more hands involved and, and, and uh, many parties that, that need to put a hand in to help this child. I want them to be there for each other, talk, communicate. Maybe it'll happen one day. Christian has strength, but doesn't know how to use it without getting in trouble. I'm Christian, I'm 15, I get angry and I like to fight. I really just care about fighting. If you don't knock me out, then I pretty much won't stop fighting. His parents have taken measures, but the solution is temporary. Christian needs to figure out how to relate to people with his words, not fists, and be reintegrated into society. 
Up until his past school year, which was eighth grade. When he got to school, he wanted to fight everybody. At school, I got kicked out of school for that. Didn't really hurt himself. Scott's analysis of the situation is grim but accurate, and the jail program is the only solution left. Are you going to do the dishes or what? They're already done. His mom got into an argument as they were arguing. Once he gets mad, he just loses it. Somebody will stab you. Like everyone on our list, Christian isn't worried about the program and gives the officers a tough time with his nonchalance. I'm not scared of going to the jail. Not scared of jail. He thinks jail's a piece of cake. He thinks he can go in there and fight anybody. Fight, we can fight. Christian's boast isn't without substance. There is no barrier between him and the inmate, yet he challenges him without batting an eyelash. You mind? You like candy bars? What type of candy bar you like? You wind up in here, who you think you're going to be listening to? You will listen to him. Nothing the inmate throws at Christian worries him, and when the interview is over, he gives a parting shot guaranteed to make the inmate see red as a thank you for your time. What y'all love to do all day, right? Love, love to fight. And, and fights ain't always fair. Fight <laughs> one way or the other. I remember the blue eyes. Okay. He isn't the only one in the group who refuses to be bullied into compliance by the inmates. For lack of a better word, Laurent looks bored by their performance. Bro, what kind of grip you in? I'm gonna leave you in here. You sir, you a grip, you ain't no grip. He ain't that light. After watching the inmate release so much steam, Kristen shuts him up with his declaration. He's obviously an intelligent kid, so one wonders why he isn't using his talents legally. Oh, you say size don't matter. Get with me. Promise you, if the police weren't here, I punch you in the mouth. You ain't even on my food chain. This is what your parents are gonna send you, and I will beat the brakes off your ass. Tell me how good the MMA works on the street. Dude. Oh, MMA don't work. I don't fight just to fight. In here, you have to fight. That look is what the program loves to see from the teens. But sometimes one comes along that refuses to yield, and this group has such. You in here with the big boy, son. You know where you're going to be in at? Yeah, you need to get yourself together. Nigel is the laughing in their face type, which means I'm he could get into unnecessary trouble before the tour is over. Yes, you with me every day. Hey, how you doing? Well, oh, see your girlfriend. You see me. Yes. Are you gay? Yes. No, uh, they turned me into this little punk, and that's what they're going to turn you into. There is no fear in Nigel's eyes, and the officers and inmates push him to see how much he can take before falling apart. Come on, let's go! Over here! Let's shoes. go! Money, baby. Let's go! Easy. Get more. You just made yeah. it easy now! If they thought it would be easy, they thought wrong, as Nigel doesn't give them the satisfaction of watching him quake in terror. Hey, it's a lot of pressure when you, you come in here, yeah, yeah. You don't, like it. Huh? don't do it! When he finally shows emotion, it isn't fear, but anger that makes him tremble. Maybe speaking to him like an adult would work better than bullying? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Now, sit down, Nigel. Why your fist balled up? Because, man, they all in my face. You can't fight them. Well, I'm going to be honest. That's probably one of the realest things I've ever heard. Like, it's only so much that you can do when you're in a situation like this. So, I know a lot of people used to be upset about this, uh... About, about this TV series and say like, oh, it doesn't help them. They're bullying them, X, Y, and Z. It's, it's, it's different strokes for different folks. In a situation like this, you you really want to, not saying that it probably helped for everybody. You know, some people can learn differently, but, but uh, for a lot of people, it did work. You're not going to be able to save every child that walks in through them doors, but you will be able to save a couple children, you know, and, and that's just a couple children less that's either in the morgue in a cemetery, in jail, in juvenile detention, anything, in any type of trouble, any type of gang violence, like, like it, it, it can help. It probably didn't help every single body or certain individuals, but it helps some people, and that's all that matter. But y'all let me know. This this was a pretty crazy episode. It was, I'm going to probably do part two because they got more to these. They definitely got more to these. I'm going to do a part two, and y'all let me know how y'all feel about this one. Let's get this video, let's say, to 5,000 likes, and we'll do part two. You know, five is is, is, is the lucky number when it comes to likes. Y'all be doing y'all thing when y'all get into, like, 3,000. Let's try to push it up. Let's get to, like, 5K, and I'm going to get y'all part two. Let's get it. Let's go. I'll see you all tomorrow, man.